Hi everyone, today I'm going to tell you a little bit about RHD, or right hemisphere damage. Alright, so what is RHD? RHD is obviously damage to the right side or hemisphere of the brain. This side of the brain is responsible for attention, memory, reasoning and problem solving, semantics and pragmatics, and speech prosody. Causes of right hemisphere damage can include accidents, trauma, brain tumors, and disease. Right hemisphere damage can impact an individual in many ways. Two of the main areas that can be impacted are an individual's cognition and communication. Cognitive deficits from right hemisphere disorder can manifest in many ways. Some of these ways include disorders such as neglect, constructional impairment, limb apraxia, anosognosia and prosopagnosia, and confabulation. Neglect occurs when an individual does not acknowledge or respond to stimuli that are presented on the opposite side of the body of the lesion. In the case of right hemisphere damage, the individual neglects stimuli on their left side. Constructional impairment is common with both left and right hemisphere damage. Due to the individual's deficits in attention, perception, and the possible presence of neglect, individuals have a hard time drawing geometric designs, drawing or manipulating 3D objects like blocks, and in general, they make reproductions that have a distorted arrangement. Individuals with right hemisphere damage and left hemiparesis may exhibit limapraxia. This is an impairment in motor programming, and the individual may struggle with functional performance on that side of the body, whether neglect is also present or not. Anosognosia is an inability to recognize a defect, such as paralysis, on one side of the body. The individual may deny the affected part or feel disconnected from that part of their body. Prosopagnosia is an inability of an individual to recognize faces, even their own. Confabulation refers to when an individual makes up experiences or stories. They often retell them with great detail and the stories seem very plausible. Confabulations can be provoked when the individual with RHD is asked questions. Confabulations can also be spontaneous. Next, we are going to talk about the communication deficits that come along with right hemisphere disorder. These can impact an individual's language, or they can impact an individual's speech, or both. Language deficits as a result of RHD can come in many forms. Some of these include difficulties with inferencing, abstract and concrete words, understanding narrative discourse, and pragmatic skills. Speech can also be damaged in many ways when a patient has RHD. Some of the damage can include impairments in prosody, understanding and using emotional speech, and understanding and using linguistic information, such as recognizing different sentence types or stress. We can use both formal and informal tests to diagnose the communication disorders associated with right hemisphere damage. Informal tests can be used to assess neglect by having the patient draw asymmetrical objects or perform various reading and writing tasks, prosody by having the patient listen to sentences and producing a matching facial expression, pragmatics by noting a patient's eye contact, turn-taking, or topic maintenance skills, and language deficits by using various probing questions. There are many formal tests that can assess cognitive and communication deficits associated with RHD. Some examples are the Discourse Comprehension Test, the Evaluation of Communication Problems in Right Hemisphere Dysfunction, the Mini Inventory of Right Brain Injury, the Rapid Assessment of Problem Solving, and more. The goals of Right Hemisphere Damage Therapy are to inform the patient and their caretakers of the nature of the disorder, provide appropriate treatment, and encourage the patient and caretakers to continue treatment on their own. Treatment for neglect can include having the patient name objects on their left and right sides, listen to the clinician's voice from their left or right side and identifying the source, etc. Treatment for attention and perception can involve sorting objects according to criteria, following columns in a newspaper, or playing easy card games and doing puzzles. Treatment for constructional impairment can involve having the patient draw lines between points or lines through other lines, connecting the dots to make letters or shapes, and copying or making their own simple drawings. 
Treatment involving orientation deficits can involve teaching and then asking the patient information such as their name, birthday, hometown or where they currently are, their phone number, family members' names, or the current president or the prime minister if you're Canadian. Treatment for anosognosia is designed to help the patient gain awareness of their deficit. We explain what we are working on and why, and we can tell the patient, we are doing this because you aren't noticing anyone on the left side of your body, or whatever their specific case may be. Treatment for prosopagnosia practices helping the patient recognize individuals. The clinician may hold up photographs and then give audio recordings of family members and good friends, and then have the patient name them. The clinician can also provide cues such as their gender, age, hair color, or other specific characteristics. Eye contact, turn taking, and topic maintenance are largely targeted with pragmatic therapy because they are easily managed and can greatly improve the patient's communication. Tasks can include cueing the patient to look at me during conversation, suggesting they remember to make eye contact at the start and end of a sentence, or analyzing a conversation together and determining where turns should be made or when the topic should change. There are currently no specific guidelines for therapy of emotional and prosody deficits. However, we can use diagnostic elements that we discussed earlier to perform this kind of therapy, such as having the patient listen to sentences and produce a responding facial expression. It is also important that we remember to rule out the possibility that the patient also has a true emotional disorder. Thanks for listening and learning with this video on right hemisphere damage.